Hi guys, I'm Silvio and welcome to the first real video of 2022. I can finally get once again into action. Hip yeah, yeah guys. What about this video? This will be a tutorial, a tutorial on painting figurines. I know, I already posted a similar video last April, yes, last April, but that was very uh, standard, common, basic work on how to paint figurines and other things, but it was focused mainly on painting figurines. For example, I took my Red Santa from Lemax there, this is one of the two of them that I have. And then after removing all the colors, all the original colors, all the original paints, I obtained my Green Santa, okay? From both sides, colors inverted in some way. And um, the difference between the two of them is that I generally finish my paintings applying a thin layer of gloss, demi-gloss, not real gloss. Uh, and it is way more uh, shiny than the original uh, red Santa. And I only painted them with my uh, brushes and a, a bunch of uh, um, acrylic uh, colors. Um, those are resin or poly resin figurines, and every and single one of the producer, uh, producers. Uh, may make them the same way using modes. Let's try to explain in a different way. If I take a container like this one, and then if I decide to place my uh, figurines right there, with half of the base protruding outside, or just even a couple of millimeters outside of the container, okay? Then I will fill it with um, a liquid silicon and then I will cover with the other half and then finish um, pouring inside the liquid silicon. Once the silicon is cured, I can remove everything, the two containers, and I will have a giant block of silicone with the base, the, with the, the, uh, only a little surface of the base protruding from the mold, from the silicone mold. Then I can pull away like a banana the silicone and I obtain a hole inside the silicone representing the negative of my Santa. Then I can use the silicon mold that I created to uh, cast many more of the same Santa using polyerasing or plaster or whatever I want. But all those are made from uh, polyerasing as I just told before. Uh, initially, in the first years, they were Porcelain, okay. Second method, my container, okay. But instead of placing my figurines with the base protruding, I put the figurine all inside the, um, the container. I needed to have obviously a suitable container that it is uh, half, half towards the Sorry, let's divide the figurines in half using this, uh, uh, this section here. So I need to have a container containing this half of the figurines and another container containing this half of the figurines. Then if I place it like that in the middle and I pour some, another time, liquid um, silicone inside it, just covering the down below half, then I will wait for the silicone to 
cure to Arden. Okay, uh, and I will mm, I will make some key inside the um, the mold the, the silicone once it has started curing some ores, and I will explain it just in a few seconds. Once the first half is cured, then what I do? I cover with the second half, and then I will pour inside another half of the liquid silicon. Inside those holes, for example, I put two holes here and one hole here, I will put some um, liquid soap, some dish soap. This way, once the first half of the silicone is hardened, is cured, the liquid that I will pour in to on top of it, the other half of the, sil the, of the liquid silicone, will get, yes, into the holes, but it will not stick together with the other half. Uh, only if you have uh, uh, pour the, the silicone one at a time, it will harden, it will cure all together. Otherwise, the half you, mm, you cured previously will not stick with the second half you will pour successively, okay, in a second time. And those two holes here and one hole here, one hole here and two holes here will serve as a key because the ones even the second half is cured. You can remove the container, you can remove both half of the uh, part of the mold, this way, if those are the two parts, they will come apart, you will remove the figurine, and you will add half the figurines into this mold, and one and the other half in this other mm, uh, mode, okay? So, one, if uh, you don't remember how, in, let's imagine this is uh, symmetrical, but with very little uh, differences from one side and the other. If you haven't uh, put the K ores, it is to invert the direction of the two uh, modes. Once uh, both the molds are cured, you will have uh, just the need to make some little hole to pour once again inside it. Plaster, poly resin, or whatever. And you use the same mold for all the figurines. Okay? Very uh, quickly explained, very simply explained, but this is the technique. And um, buildings and uh, uh, figurines are all made in the same way. The artist uh, will take blocks of plaster, small for the uh, figurines, bigger for the buildings, then sculpt into the plaster. And once the sculpting is done, they use this technique, they put the uh, first uh, um, prototype, the first plaster prototype inside container, suitable container, uh, with two half of them, obviously, the second method I explained, and then they uh, pour inside some um, other plaster or uh, some other uh, polyresin or resin and they unmold them and they paint everything. So they generally produce three, four, five, ten molds and from those molds they will massively produce figurines and buildings. But each time you use a mold they are, they, you will have some friction when you decide to unmold the final product from it, some friction, some um, that will cause deterioration that of the original mold, and you start losing details. Each time you pull something from inside a container, you need to do this. This is exaggerated, I know, but even 
little movements. Imagine only 10, 100 modes, the same modes, used for producing thousands, thousands of Christmas, of Santa, sorry. The last one will have the less possible details, okay? Because the mode, each mode will be deteriorated. That's the reason why um, all figurines from every producer aren't very detailed. And that's the reason why I only applied a basic technique to repaint my Santa from red to green. Now, is there another way? Yes, there is another way. Obviously, rhetorical question. You don't want to buy the figurines from producers or from sellers, uh, or maybe you haven't found what is suitable for your Christmas village, then you decide to model in 3D and then use a 3D printer to uh, get the final result of what you have in mind. Um, let me check if everything is rolling. Yes, sorry guys, <laughs> I lost. Uh, I was afraid the camera wasn't uh, shooting. Uh, I've already shown you this little monster here. <laughs> this is the first figurine I've uh, modeled and printed and 3D printed for my first new idea of, for my 2022 Christmas village, a three ring circus. Obviously, this is a navy clown. What is a circus without a navy clown? Nothing. Uh, you are certainly saying, yes, too big, the head is too big, yes, but I know that this isn't correct. But just remember this is Victorian here, so 1800. Uh, circus was populated by uh, characters, by people that were there to be body shamed guys. I know I'm a bad person right now, but it was the case at that time. If body shaming was even is was and even in the dictionary at that time. So voluntarily I uh, I have here similar eight but the body is enlarged and the head is enlarged. But the eight is similar to my uh, to the standard eight of uh, uh, Lemax uh, figurines. Uh, this is uh, printed from liquid resin. I will not <laughs> talk about the technique. Maybe if you want, just leave some comments, and I will talk also about that. I will also talk about that. Sorry. Look at the details. I hope you can see and appreciate the details. So let me just do something I shouldn't do. Okay, I will come closer to the camera. Let's hope you can see. But the details on the resin figurines is way, way, way more detailed than are, so details are way more detailed than those from the original Lemax producer. Why? Each and single time you print the cloud, even if it is the 10,000 10, 10, times, 20,000 times, you start from an original digital file and then the process is the same. You don't have a mold, so the precision all depends on, on the precision of your printer. This is printed on 2K, 2K, so not 4K as full HD, but this is 2K. Um, so the details are always perfect as you have modeled them. Uh, that's, for example, I also tried, this is printed on with a resin, as I told you, but I also tried, maybe not on white, but let's get to 
on green. I also try to print it on a filament 3D printer. The details aren't the same. I hope you can see them. I don't know. Right now, I don't know, but I can assure you that the details uh, printed on with filaments are less precise than the details using a resin. Um, but the mechanical resistance of a filament printed uh, figurines is way more elevated than the mechanical resistance of the figurines printed with resin. If I apply some, if I apply too much um, strength on the ba balloon cords there, I will crack them. Those, no. Those are flexible and resistant. So this is good for printing some mechanical products like the handle I will show you in some minutes. I know that this is printed uh, with the filament printer and I will use it to, uh, um, to hold my figuring while I will paint them. But this is uh, not very precise and the surface is not smooth because this is printed like some circle, one on top of the other, so layer by layer. But I tested also the same figurines printed and no result. I started from there, then I was surprised with this one. But this was my first printing with a 3D printer, uh, figurine printing with a 3D printer. Okay? Um, so, how will I proceed? Let's check once again. Okay, everything is uh, good. How will I proceed? How will I proceed? Here, let me just tell you something. This was polyresin and then on top of it layers on and layers of um, of uh, uh, acrylic uh, color of acrylic paint paints. Generally, I will go with just one layer because otherwise another layer uh, will uh, with another layer I will lose details. But with this, oh by the way, yes, the base here is printed with uh, the filament. Yes, it is white. Uh, this is more mechanical resistant, yes, and uh, oh, anyway, this will be hidden behind the snow, under the snow, in my village. Um, how will I proceed? I have the polyresin, the resin figure, okay? On top of it, I will add some primer, then I will add some paint, then I will finish with some gloss. Okay, so this step here is <laughs> the new step from that te this technique to the new technique. What is a primer? A primer is necessary, mm, okay, not really necessary, but it is uh, suitable when you uh, paint a 3D printed figurine. The figurines, once uh, as finish and uh, <laughs> to be printed, comes outside of the printed out of the printer in this way with supports and by the way this is the magician that will perform in my circus okay um, those are called supports because the figurines is printed upside down from the feet to the top of the head or what else it is above the head but if you start with this foot here and then this one, this foot here, and then it goes up, 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 
once it has reached the, the, the need to print this, if you haven't material under here, this will be printed uh, in the middle of the uh, batch of uh, resin and you will not have cohesion. So the supports are the skeleton on top of which every single element of the figurines is printed, very quickly explained. Once the figurine is printed, I wash it and I use uh, water washable resin so I will, don't, uh, I will not waste a ton of money on isopropylic alcohol or isopropanol or IPA to wash my uh, figurine. This is uh, washable in water, not under the uh, flowing uh, water, not, <laughs> not under uh, the water that comes from your faucet, obviously, but in a batch full of water, I clean it. Then the final, the, then once the, um, I finish all the uh, printing, I pass through a UV lamp the uh, batch of water, the container with uh, dirty water, with water contaminated by uh, resin, obviously, and the resin solidify, and then I can uh, filter the water and take the plastic, the, poly, the resin, and dispose of it, and then the water is purified this way. So I don't um, Mm, produce pollution <laughs> in the water. But once the resin is uh, cleaned and is washed, I need to remove the supports like this way or like this way. Okay, the supports are needed. Where I add a contact between the support and the figurines, I will add some holes, some contact points that will need to be cleaned with a very thin sandpaper but I risk to still have some microscopic holes into the figurines. So here the first use of the primer. The primer and I use uh, Valeo primers this is an European company, I think, Spanish company, if I'm correct. I, I, I don't know. And I use two colors, generally, of a primer. Some gray one and some black one. Some gray one for all the figurines and the black one for woods or, or walls if I need sometimes to print them. I've never shown you in my Christmas villages, but I paint also. This way, you always see me painting all and everything with just my brushes, but I will use the primer this time. So the primer is not a common uh, acrylic paint. This is some acrylic polyurethane. So it's some sort of pl liquid plastic that dries very, very quickly. So if you use the primer on top of your figurines with a very thin layer, you will cover and you will fill those microscopic holes, giving all the surface of the figurines a more smooth and precise and detailed surface that is very, very, very well suited for the next step, for the painting step. Okay? Those primer here can be used with no let's let's say second second use of the primer it is plastic it's not perfectly smooth it's some sort of uh, 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 microscopic rough surface then uh, uh, the color the paint the acrylic paints can cringe on top of the Color of the primer can can um, get can no can get can uh, attach more effectively to the figurines, okay, to the figurines, and this is a good bad layer for all the uh, 
course I will be using. Sorry, a uh, little uh, confused there, but it's, uh, it's, it's like that, okay? I'm confused right now. I will not cut, cut anything from this video. And I'm rusted, guys. Yes, after a month of not having any tutorial or anything else explained. And here in Italy, I don't speak currently English every single day of my life. So let's continue. French, yes. Italian, yes. Not in English every single one of my work days. The primer. You can use it with some brushes. Okay, yes. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, wrote even in the in the description there. But the best way to paint the figurines with a primer, because you need also to be quick, is to use an airbrush. Okay. Mm, this is my standard basic um, airbrush and it uses a tube connected to, um, to a compressor okay to a compressor then you fill the cup there with some primer uh, I will come to that in just some seconds and then you put the cap on top of it and then you start uh, using the trigger here to have the air flowing and then you pull it backwards to start getting the, uh, the, mm, the primer of the paints getting into the air flow and then be splitted and then be vaporized on top of the figurines and generally I do the, um, the priming uh, the, I, I will prime my figurines this way going vertically or top and bottom not in every direction I try to be a regular the same way I used to paint uh, every single one of my layer of the um, styrofoam panels horizontally for every single one of the colors of the lay of the uh, painting layers of and then ver just vertical for my uh, white dry brush here I generally try to go in just one way uh, this way yes it is horizontal but in fact it is uh, vertical because I am more comfortable to do this way with many I think one layer will be enough for this figurines it well detailed it's well cleaned etc but uh, you will see that it, it will change color once everything has changed a color it will be good uh, it will uh, change from dark gray to light gray because this is gray but a lighter color of, of gray and after I finish, I will let it dry the primer. Then, during that time, I will clean my airbrush because every single time you finish using, uh, working with the airbrush, yes, you will see me right there. Uh, you need to clean it with water, with demineralize with water, yes, and then. Uh, once uh, it is almost clear, I will use some airbrush cleaner to remove the last part or to remove some residual uh, thing that is still there. How you wash it, you will simply fill the cup there with uh, water uh, many, many times and then you start uh, flushing the water into a container. Uh, over and over again once it is clean and then also you will through the water. Uh, the basic the principle here, this, inside here you have a needle, in this case I use a hose um, a tip here of 0.5 millimeter. It's big, yes I know, but this is not common, the primer here is not common paint, it is plastic, it is very thick, 
So if you use a 0.2 millimeters or, or a 0.3 millimeter uh, needle and a hose uh, here, you will clog it right now. <laughs> Immediately it will be a clogged. So minimum you will you you will need to go with uh, 0.5 millimeter uh, holes inside the holes there, and it is well suited for this uh, this uh, prime here, uh, this primer here. Okay. Here on the left, on the right, sorry, I have my stand for the end brush. And then, after it is dried, I will start painting it with my brushes, my Kolinsky brushes and a bunch of colors. Then, once the paint is as dried, I will do the gloves. Hold here, or today, for you guys, <laughs> sorry. Last thing before getting to action. The color schema, suitable colors for my heavy clan here. I will have each and single one of the balloons with a different color. Yes, of course. The cords here, maybe I think white. Yes, it's it white. Oh, by the way, you are you know, certainly wondering. Oh, damn, those cords, those. Uh, Balloon cords there, though are very very thick. Yes, <laughs> yes they are thick, but uh, uh, those are needed for three D printing. Imagine the proportion of a real cord there inside here. <laughs> it will have absolutely no mechanical resistance, <laughs> and it will break like that just by doing this. The cord. Each and single one of the cords will break, will snap. Okay, so this is normal. Um, Lamax, when they use such kind of thing, use some metallic uh, pin there. I don't want some metallic pin. All is modeled with um, um, in one piece, so here is a standard. Sometimes you need to go different than reality, but this works, guy. Having those these those thick cords there is very useful. Then hands, hands and face completely white, guys. This is a clown, 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 clown. I don't know. Yes, clown is in French, clown in English and Italian. Uh, red, absolutely red nose. I will use some red or so for the. <laughs> yes, guys, you have figured it out correctly. <laughs> this is murder. Uh, from Pennywise, the clown in Stephen King. It, yes, yes, it's not an original design. I know. Uh, okay, I, I'm a bad guy, guys. Bad, bad people. But I will try to, because I like that guy. It is not very, very dangerous. It's not that dangerous, at least for me. It's not that heavy, guy. Then I will go with some yellow pants, all yellow, then orange there for these little pompons. Some purple and green here on the collar because it is there. Then I have a, a small jacket, yeah. Yeah, like Pennywise asked, but I added something here to get together left and right part. Uh, original this has a red border and shining black. I don't know, I will try to use another color. Maybe black, I don't know. Uh, I will decide once I painted everything else, because this is a top. Then the... Um, then what I missed... Yes, here, the... And yes, white, then the rest, yeah, the arms, I will go with purple and uh, light green, yeah, very purple, guys, I purchased a purple, very, very bright colors I will use, and then the shoes, I know Pennywise and the original clown are just simple black shoes, but I modeled some um, big clown shoes, I will go with some... Uh, red because if I have the pants that are yellow I will start with some red 
then black stripes, then I think one tip blue and one tip green, I don't know yet. And then this is my first uh, figurine. Then I will need to remember exactly the colors I used because I modeled a series of them. This is a little uh, juggler, a little uh, not dwarf, but uh, yes, maybe it is a dwarf. I mean, it, has a, it is shorter, of course, but uh, juggler. But it has a similar, um, similar uh, costume there. The color together, just one pom pom here. I have two pom poms. The, here I have just one pom pom. Yeah, then here, uh, here it has a complete jacket and not a vest. This has a vest here. You can see here you have the vest, the jacket, the vest. Yes, no, this is a jacket. This is simply a vest, I think. Yes, this is a vest. And then this has the long jacket and then the monocycle there and everything. So I need to remember the the uh, schema, the schema colors, but uh, I don't know if I will uh, write it down anyway, I will have this as my first uh, starting point. Obviously I have some other figure, M maybe I will show you, Man, yes, this is very beautiful. The acrobat woman there, the platform here, obviously it is from filament and the acrobat woman is from resin, but hey, this is another too long, I've shown it too long, and then another time I will body shame something, a figurine, but just remember this is a circus from Victorian era, from 1860, 1840, 1860, 1905, I don't know, the bearded woman, guys, yes, the bearded woman with some classic uh, um, dress, very elegant, like I, 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 um, I, um, I, I was inspired by Alice in Wonderland with this big um, bow there and I imagined it with uh, blue, white and gold here and there but this is a bearded woman. The hate less, uh, uh, less tall than my heavy clown but I went a different size. The last one just uh, um, pulled out of pulled out of from the printer and then I will go into action was my ringmaster. I know that Lemax has already a ringmaster, but he's a too classic ringmaster. Here is my ringmaster, he doesn't have a, um, a stand there, but the stand this time is right now be printed on my uh, resin printer and sorry for the noise for the background no noise, but I wanted it something different. These are more standard proportion uh, Compared to a standard Lemax, those are very big very scary because a clown it has to be massive and scary and I wanted a remaster very iconic all the standard and Lemax figurines are posed plastically, are very, very, very posed, are, oh my god, no, please, thank you, with no movement at all, very, very few movements, very small amount of figurines have movements, so, like, uh, strike a pose, please, and I will take a picture, no, I wanted some uh, ringmaster very iconic, I wanted I wanted, and I tried to go there with my modeling, with Freddie Mercury Ringmaster, guys, and this was for me the best, the best position to, uh, to have a Freddie Mercury Ringmaster. I couldn't uh, replicate it exactly because I wanted to offend anybody, but this for me is ta -da! is very active, is very dynamic with this stick, with this long stick on the left, on the right hand. Uh, just remember me, the mic used by Freddie Mercury Empires. I was there in 86 at Wembley, yes guys during the best concert of my life 
and when the queens performed when queen performed at uh, Wembley in 1986 and I was very very young guys yes and I no I no, my parents um, my parents didn't know anything about no yes it, it, it's ancient history but I was there so this is my uh, ring master Freddie Mercury uh, top ad and I also added because I don't know yet if I want to go with some steampunk but I still have that crazy idea um, in my head in my sick mind so I put it also some uh, little maybe you can see them maybe yes some little uh, steampunk uh, go Google on top of his uh, top head then a standard and then yes I also have the wig because for me a ring master is not just the hey guys welcome this is that this is that it can also go into action and Freddie Mercury wasn't re was ready even to take his whip and go towards the lion if ever he will um, try to uh, attack the uh, the tamer the lion tamer that so this will be my ring this is the last thing I printed and the printer is working I finished modeling it Today is Saturday, I finished it uh, uh, Friday evening, so yesterday evening I finished modeling it. And uh, so, uh, not everything will be this ugly with this awful proportion, but this is voluntarily done. Circus guys need to be ugly and body shaver. Let's go into action, guys. Let's take my airbrush and everything else. Last thing I will show you how I will start the painting. Once the primer is, uh, is uh, dried, I will use this end here to, uh, to sustain my, uh, my figuring and because I will need to paint some more details, but I don't want to, to, um, to ruin my handle there. So. I will add here, what is that? This is a neck cap, guys. Uh, the primer I will use, for priming I will use this head cap. This is a wooden head cap. cap. With uh, mm, double sided tape here, then there, the figurines on top of it, then I will go. I don't care if I, uh, I will not add some, uh, some uh, color on the base here, um, below the base, because not even figurines from Lennox are, are, are painted from the down below there. So let me just check once again and then I will start from there and I will show you my airbrush technique. Yes. Little pause, just three seconds there. Voila guys. Hello, let's go, let's go to work the work. The work has to be done. I know. Sorry, guys. My bad French English accent. My bad English French accent or French English accent. I don't know. Uh, no, it is English French accent. Um, uh, primer. Grey primer here. Just the glove here. Let me just prepare the base there. Some double sided tape. One here. One there. Remove. Remove then another layer of both sided there. Okay, I think it will be enough. Now let's check. Okay, by the way. I don't use uh, um, super glue to glue 
the two the base and the uh, figuring together I use uh, some um, epoxy uh, glue two components epoxy mm -hmm. glue way more resistant a little longer to dry out but very very resistant so let's say it is right there so let's try to go there no i will leave them there because i will certainly do a mesh let's uh, shake for a while my primer Let's remove anything that doesn't need to be painted because I will add some spray over. Okay, I think this is good. A glove to my left hand. Okay, then black paper to check uh, the, the initial uh, flow of the uh, primer because I need to check then I will go red is IPA is a propylic alcohol I will not add them uh, initially I will simply add some drops of water blue is a water blue cap is water inside of the mixture okay because it will uh, make it more... Uh, I know, someone uses some, um, some drops of, uh, um, of uh, glycerin, this is a flow improver. I don't like flow improver, I prefer just go with some uh, water. And sorry if from time to time the compressor will start, uh, and we make uh, some more noise. And by the way, I'm going with one point half bar, okay? The compression, not too elevated. Let's remove the cap there. Let's pour some. Primer inside. Oops, I spilled it towards the left. I think that this is more than enough. Then I will use some drops of demineralized water. Okay. Recap it. There. And there. I don't know really the intensity because you need to regulate the intensity with this little screw there and let me try okay it is good so let's go guys sorry
guys um, sorry for the noise and then I will put my yes there and uh, okay if you you uh, are thinking it's always the same color no guys it is not the, not the same color it has changed you can see that it has changed it is a more a lighter gray okay so uh, some people use directly a big a big uh, uh, primer flow right from the beginning I prefer to go very 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 light at the beginning to have those microscopic holes and fill it with a primer then in the last three or four minutes I will go it is longer this way I know because with this figure here three minutes of standard opening holes and with the standard opening it, oh, thank you, compressor, for shouting out, for uh, <laughs> for zipping out your mouth. Thank you. Um, and then I was saying uh, three minutes. It's more than enough. The, I I've used my airbrush even three times that time because I go with a very 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 light opening with very uh, very a uh, small opening in the um, in the holes uh, in the in the tip of the uh, brush, uh, otherwise I will have gone this way rapidly. Why I use also this? Because when I stop uh, with the trigger in, with my uh, brush uh, and then I restart, generally the first input, the first uh, splash is really a big uh, splash. In this way I can uh, test it before there and then I will go with the, the rest. Um, I will, I had uh, some black marking on the base where I uh, placed the, the figurine before gluing it. Now it has um, disappeared and the color, guys. And now it is uh, uh, some uh, dark, but once it has uh, dried out, it will be even more uh, darker. You can see that effectively, it is lighter. I will uh, I will uh, wait for it to dry. Going with this amount of very light amount of uh, um, primer coming out from the airbrush, it will take ten minutes to dry out each time. And instead, this one, this flow here, this bigger flow, will take some more minutes. They they suggest twelve hours. No, I will not wait twelve hours. And uh, I will be right back with you once I've cleaned my uh, my airbrush here. I need to clean it out right now because otherwise it will uh, clog. 
So guys, I will stop the camera. You will uh, see some difference when the camera will restart because I will clean it right here because the compressor is down there. And by the way, no, not too hot the compressor. Nine minutes of painting, I think. I don't know. See you in just some minutes for... Uh, oops, guys, here I have scratched it. So, sorry, I will go there. And uh, I will uh, be back uh, with the uh, brushing time, with the painting time, and I will... I forgot my Kolinsky brushes. I will get also my Kolinsky brushes, okay? Let's go! Well guys, it's one hour later. Yes, it's one hour later. Let's proceed with the, uh, everything else. Let's try to remove... Uh, yes, my double-sided tape is very, very hard to remove. So white, pure white here, and the rest is there. My handle. to find the correct position. Okay, this will be the starting point. Okay, just forgot my magnifying glasses because I will need my magnifying glasses this time. Where to start? Let's start. Let's start with the with the pants there. Okay, yellow. So yellow, two choices of yellow. Uh, Natural yellow and cadmium yellow. I will go with uh, uh, normal yellow and I will mark the number for my reference I've used. So yellow will be 69.1050.130. Uh.
I can see
Okay guys, I think it's done. I'll just wait for some minutes. No, it's not done. Uh, yeah. Alright, alright, alright. Okay, I was saying uh, it's done. You have seen me doing everything. Uh, so for the the vest here, I've mixed here some red and some um, and some metallic uh, silver in order to get a translucent, uh, shining uh, vest there. And if you look at the vest it is shining a little more than the rest of the um, of the costume there okay so I will wait 10-12 uh, minutes then I will do the um, this the, the gloss over it and it will be the last thing I will be doing for today okay let me clean some of the mess here and then I will see you for the final uh, gloss um, layer. Bye. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, guys, it's half an hour later. Uh, I think it has dried enough. You can see that this yellow here has already some uh, gloss effect this is a kind of uh, particular okay um, yellow was the most problematic color because it's not 100% uh, opaque it's somehow transparent or not coloring enough the surface uh, same problem with the green uh, the two color I have had problem were, were both the yellow, this one, especially this one, and this one, and then the green. The other colors were practically perfect for uh, this uh, theory. Uh, it all depends on the pigments they used for the, uh, for the uh, mix. Okay, and uh, so I have to make, to do three, four layers on the on the trap on the pants here on the on the yellow part and almost 10 layers here on the top um, yellow balloon um, but uh, uh, this is also giving the uh, pants there a uh, washed effect so I will not wash the black wash okay so somehow dirty not really dirty somehow uh, aged a costume there okay not perfectly uh, clean now gloss or demi gloss this is a, a medium medium self-leveling gloss this is a, a extra gloss red extra gloss this is medium uh, gloss or so half gloss uh, I think I will go this time with my with the new uh, medium uh, gloss I will pour some of it here and then I will use my uh, one of my brushes to make this No need, no need to cover exactly the entire surface here, just need to have some gloss effect over here and there, okay? Don't tell me, baby, cause I don't really wanna know what happened last night. Oh no, 
just say it wasn't so Just say you love me And let me fall back into sleep But when I wake up You say I had a real bad dream Okay, good, this is done, 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 done. Long journey, long day, not long journey, long, long, long day. So let me take my other glasses. I will wait for some minutes, but uh, the overall look is this one. So, printed, so no, modeled. 3D printed, primed, painted, and the final layer of gloss. I switched at the mo uh, um, during the last minutes from my handle here to this one because when the when the <coughs> the figurines is trapped here, the figurines trapped here, I cannot reach every angle when I'm painting the feet uh, and, uh, and the base itself. So this one, but this is not very, uh, very comfortable. Uh, it is too short. This is more uh, ergonomic, with the form here is more ergonomic, but this one is also very, very, very useful uh, in the end of the painting uh, process. Yellow, blue, purple, <laughs> Uh, orange uh, and uh, uh, maroon, maybe plenty of color. Mm, I've eliminated a little bit the <laughs> heavy look it at just the eyes are uh, at uh, 30 degrees, and I added a smile. My original the uh, modeling was a very sarcastic, a very heavy uh, smile. No, too, 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 too heavy. And then colors not entirely representing um, the clown from it, the movie, um, but uh, because even the, um, the harm there would have been, would have been, I should have painted like the color with stripes, alternate stripes, uh, purple and uh, clear uh, blue. But I think uh, uh, this is more effective, okay? Uh, the duality between the clown, the evil, and the good, purple and uh, light blue, and a smile but with uh, evil eyes. Uh, I see. Um, it's done. You haven't seen me during all this process. Maybe I will try. A different thing yeah I'm here sorry <laughs> bad bad position but this is my real first video of 2022 up oh, you are seeing me now maybe I'm getting there okay like this and thank you as always please don't forget to subscribe comment and give big thumbs up sorry guys for my over position right now bye